Konnichiwa minasan, it's Gray from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? You're good. I hope you're Genki. Okay, I have a rare early morning Mai time review, so I'm off camera. Please forgive me for that. But I want to review, finally, the Ambassadors issue 4, which actually came out two and a half weeks ago. It was released on May the 10th and it's priced at $3.99. This is written by Mark Miller, and it's got fantastic art, yet again, gorgeous art by a new artist, well, a different artist for each issue. This one features Olivier Coipel. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's either Coipel or Coipel, but I tell you what, when you see the art in here, you're gonna love it. It's really, really good. I've seen his work on some of the Magic Order issues that Mark Miller's been writing as well, so recommend those as well. Please check them out. Now, is this issue any good? That's what you want to know. Is it worth buying? Well, I say I'm sorry for this late review. I've been wanting to get it together. I've just been crazy busy. And I already have reviews for issues one to three, one, two, and three on my channel, so you can check those out. But with this one, I'm going to go into a bit of a, a longer story summary, a bit of a deep dive. What I usually do is I'll cut the story summary with about, you know, between six to ten pages left because I don't want to spoil the ending. But because it's been out for over two and a half weeks now, um, I'm going to show you to the very end. So if you want to, if you don't want to see that, you don't want any spoilers for the ending, then please, you can cut off the review maybe with a few minutes to go. Okay, and what I'm hoping to do is issue five was out last week. I'm hoping to get a review of that up on the channel by maybe this time tomorrow. So please bear with me for that. But yeah, this is a huge recommend. I think this might be my favorite issue out of all four so far. And I really like the first one too, but yeah, this is great. It takes you to Brazil, to the Barrios, and as the solicitation describes it, Mark Miller says, This is our most action-packed issue yet, moving the story to Brazil, where a Catholic priest fighting drug lords is offered a spot on this international super team, but he appears to be happy just doing God's work in the Barrios. So yeah, big, big recommend. So without further ado, I'm going to give you my story summary, so please keep watching. Here we go. We open in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil and we're confronted with a dead body who's been executed, bullseye in the head. He's left outside a church where apparently the father, the priest there, was counselling him to leave the militia. Now he's dead. It's a message, isn't it? But the police are saying, nah, nah, this isn't one of ours. This is Octavio, Octavio's gang. And we hear that they're sending somebody called Z to nip it in the bud, because the last thing they want is a turf war. Listen to yourselves, says the priest. Not even a hint of shame. The priest walks back into the church and he sees he's got an email. Dear Father Vitor Pereira, you've been selected out of 300 million applicants to join the Ambassadors, codenamed Brazil. Father Pereira can't believe it. The scene switches and we're outside a building. There seems to be a dead body, a different one, and two guards. Who's this being murdered right outside our door? As they're taking care of the body, hiding it so the police don't see it, one of the guards looks up and he's got a machine pistol pointed at his forehead. We get this image of a very cool looking woman. She's got shades on, nose ring, she's holding the gun. Inside there's somebody saying, DD? Then we get one of these pages of great comic book action art by Olivia Coipel. Look at this. Don't need any dialogue here, you can work out exactly what's happening and none of it's good for the people on the receiving end. Z making her way up the stairs. Dee Dee, get in here! This must be Octavio and he's looking worried. Z continues to take out any other guards that are there. Storms in and now there are three of them and her pointing rifles, automatic weapons at this guy. It turns out it is, it's Octavio. Dee Dee's dead, Octavio. I've been sent to deliver a message from our mutual friend, Captain Lobo. Now, I wonder if Mark Miller chose that name on purpose. Has he got a fondness for Lobo? Z tells the crime boss that from now on, he's going to be the police captain's butler. Next morning, we're having breakfast at the very expensive looking house of Captain Eduardo Lobo. We can see the ex-crime boss Octavio pouring his coffee for him there. He gives Z a little extra for doing such a great job. 
Then she's in the confessional, confessing to the father. He tells her he's not sure how seriously she takes her confession to keep doing the same things over and over. But I really am penitent, father. I take no pleasure in what the captain sends me to do, and I try my best to work within a moral code. Is this a joke? Then we get a bit of a background story. She didn't join the militia to be a murderer. She got sick of being charged for gas and electricity by the drug dealers growing up. Father Pereira counters with, well now, now the police are charging you for the same thing. They're just as bad as the people you replaced. What am I supposed to do? If I walk away, I end up dead. And then she warns Father Pereira about a strike he's organising. You've been protected here so far because of your status. But you interfere with their tax collecting, they'll put a bullet in your head. This isn't tax, this is robbery, says Father Pereira. Then we switch scenes to Antarctica, where the headquarters of the ambassadors is located. What the hell am I doing here? It seems he's not interested in playing superheroes, as he calls it. He certainly didn't nominate himself. The Korean leader of the ambassadors, Dr. Chun Hei Chung, replies, Well, Father, it was 2,000 of your parishioners that nominated you. Then we realised we were looking at somebody very special. She tells him that this is his chance to fix the problems the politicians just ignore, the police, you know, being just as bad as the gangs before them. Do you mean by putting this wristband on, letting a computer take over my body, says Father Pereira. And then she explains that no, you'll have access to 50 different powers. You can download up to three at a time. Think of all the good you could do with this. And he replies, I'm doing fine as I am. Then we get a bit of foreshadowing to the character who's going to appear in the next issue, in issue five. Somebody who's flying around in the sky, playing with jets. How fast is he going? Then we're back in Rio with Father Pereira and it appears to be his wife who's pregnant. And she's saying that she doesn't see the downside to this. That wristband could keep you safe from the assassination squads. Father Pereira replies, God will keep me safe. And God will look after the baby too. This superhero thing, this was never part of the plan. Then we're with Father Pereira and he's praying in his church. A shadow behind him. And we see the barrel of a gun pointed at the back of his head. Hello Z, I heard a rumour you were coming to visit me today. She tells him not to turn around. She doesn't want to look at him when she pulls the trigger. And then we see he's actually got the wristband on. And he tells her, you're not going to hurt anyone Z ever again. Switch scenes again, back to Captain Lobo's apartment or mansion or whatever it is. Inside we see Octavio sweeping the floor. Suddenly the lights go out. What the hell? A message is broadcast into the house. Captain Eduardo Lobo, you and your family will leave Rio by midnight. What's going on? Who's doing this? If you don't leave, you're going to end up looking like the cars outside. And then we pull out outside, we can see cars slowly raising or rising up into the air and then being crushed by some invisible force. Captain Lobo tells his family to run. We're going, we're going. And we hear a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And then we get this really strange looking single page where the house, Captain Lobo's house is being destroyed from underneath by what looks like a kind of earth colored giant a figure but on this giant's head you can see a very very small figure standing there it's a weird scene and it takes the next page to like, realize what it is it is some kind of giant but it must be one of the powers and it's not father Pereira who's using it of course it's not it's z there she is and she's saying thank you padre the scene switches to the next day it's sunday People looking happy and we see Father Pereira. I told you the Lord would look after us, Maria. There's more than one way to save people in this city. And then we see Z stood on the fantastic statue of Jesus, looking down on Rio. Control, this is codename Brazil, requesting transport. I want to be in the embassy in Seoul. Then she materialises in the embassy in Seoul. We see the other members of the ambassadors so far. There's codename India, codename France. Of course, the boss, codenamed Korea. Then we cut to San Francisco, and it is the Korean ambassador's ex-husband, 
He's with a group of what he calls billionaires and he's inviting somebody else to join him. He's offering perfect health, of course, some of the powers too, I guess. But one thing they must never do is go public. This is how it works. It only works if people don't know about it. Do you have any questions before Mr. Chung had started? And then he brings up the other super people, the ambassadors, this rescue squad that your ex-wife's been putting together. Are they going to be a problem? And we see the evil of Dr. Chung's reaction. He smashes the desk, the table or whatever he's sat by. No, Mr. Anson, Chun Hei won't be a problem. And this is where the issue ends. And there you have it. What did you think of that? That was a cool, action-packed issue, wasn't it? And the art, so, so good. Okay, here is a preview of the next cover, issue 5, which, as I say, it's already out. It was released last Wednesday, and I'm hoping to get a review of that done later on today, my time, so it should be up by tomorrow morning, hopefully, American time. Okay, so as always, thank you so much for watching. This has been Grey, early morning in Japan, from Wakazashi's Tea House. About to go and get some breakfast. I'm um, hoping you're having a great day wherever you are, and I hope to see you in a future video. Please drop a comment, let me know what you think of the review, and if you are reading this series. Okay, see you in the next video. Matane.